Y'all already know it's Big J and not the little one. I just skipped class with the progress report. Let's go. The progress report. Let's go. Okay. All right. What's going on? It's your girl, Lala Shepard. This is a new episode of Skipping Class presented by the progress report. I got Big Jada, not the little one, in the Period. building. <laughs> What's going on? Not much, you know, in the A. Damn you know, right. I had to come stop by here, though, for sure. Had to, because the last time we talked was like a year ago. It was uh-huh. virtual. Yep. So oh, it's, I'm sure it's been so much growth and progress in between. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to get into all that good stuff. I love the new song. It's definitely a vibe. Backseat. Yeah, that <laughs> shit. It's so dope. So we're going to get into all that good stuff, but we'll start from the top. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, you from Chicago. Yeah. So the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, though. the south suburbs. Okay. Gotta look, south suburbs. South <laughs> suburbs. Now, you know, we got to paint that picture for, I've been to Chicago several uh-huh. times, but I don't know if I've been to that particular area. Mm-hmm. So what was it like, you know, growing up there as opposed to what we hear about Chirac and stuff like that? Well, I mean, over the years, the burbs got worse. So, cause it's, it's not too far from okay. the city. It's like 25 minutes, 20 minutes. So a lot of people from the city mm-hmm. was moving to the burbs and, you know, traveling back and forth, but it's, it's a little bit safer, but I mean, it's all kind of like the same thing a little bit True. at this point. So I feel that it is. Uh, it is crazy everywhere. <laughs> it is. It is. It's like, man, nowhere is really safe, but okay. you know, when we talk about Chicago, do you feel like it's a stigma on Chicago? Like everybody think, is it true? Is it? Yeah, it's just terrible though. Like mm-hmm. not, not as far as like violence. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's very terrible. But I would definitely recommend people to go, but just it's stay away city. from the bad areas. Mm-hmm. Like you know, but downtown, you know, they got a lot of nice stuff out there. It's a it's beautiful, beautiful city. Good food. Great food. Yes, for sure. And I wanted to ask you about that. Like you know, with you having some time here in Atlanta, I know you lived mm-hmm. here at one point and. Just, you know, traveling back and forth. Mm-hmm. Who has the best food between Chicago, Chicago. and Atlanta? Oh. Chicago. You don't even have to wow. finish. Wow. She didn't let me finish. Damn. <laughs> okay. All right. They got the best food in the world mm. to me. Okay. Like, even because I live in Virginia now, and, like, they food you. not even really that good. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Um. No, I haven't she had that before. Okay, I was about to say, she don't sound like, like she I impressed ain't, I ain't had that before, but I love seafood. Me too. Me too. So. They say all bad bitches love seafood. That's what Future said. Future said it. <laughs> okay, respect. Well, I, I'll give you that. I mean, Chicago food is delicious. I got a homegirl that mm-hmm. lived there, and every time I go, I, undeniable. So Exactly. What, what about, like, when you go out and customer service? Like, here, I feel like the customer service is not always great, but, you know, in comparison to Chicago, how do you feel about that? Um, I feel like the customer service here... It's like people got a lot of hospitality, okay. you know, they like it. Well, from what I'm saying, like a lot of people be nice and stuff. They don't be rude. That's Chicago. Good. I feel like it depends what area you in, because mm. if somebody don't want to do their job, they just don't want to do their job. <laughs> so I don't think it's that bad, though. I feel you. Now, have you have you tried the Harold's chicken down here yet? Uh, we actually went to Harold's yesterday. I don't know where it was at. It was like like bar and grill. OK. Oh, okay. oh, okay, okay. It was pretty good. It was good. It, was okay. a, it, it, it ain't messing with Chicago, but it the was original. still good. Yeah. Can't do nothing with the original. Mm-hmm. For sure. Here you go, my guy. Okay, so, all right. So, would you move into Virginia now? Any particular reason why? Or you just wanted to change the scenery? Yeah, pretty much, like, and then, like, due to, like, opportunities. So, mm-hmm. I had moved that way. And, um, but I mainly be in North Carolina cause I'm borderline. God so, damn, I can't keep up. Okay. Yeah, so I be in like Raleigh, Got Greensboro, you. Charlotte, okay. like okay. all through the, like. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. And just with you having these different parts in you, like how does mm-hmm. it reflect in your music now? Very different because like, I feel like a, me moving around kind of helped my growth. Absolutely. Like, so even when like some people hear like my newer music, they be like, dang, I hit a growth. Like yeah. you move around, you figure out different sounds, different flows, you know, nice. you'd be able to rap about more cause you see them more. Exactly. So that's what's up. That's tight. That's tight. And I think, you know, I always recommend like move, like, and just experience new things. Yes. Even if you hate it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's healthy. Like, so I respect you for doing that. Um, now talk about playing instruments as a kid. And do you still know how to play so, those instruments? No. Okay. 
Cause it was a while. Like I yeah. played instruments in like the sixth grade. Oh, I played a okay. uh, French horn. Oh damn. So yeah, I was in a band and I had, th that's really the only time I had did it. But that's when I realized like, I liked it, that type of stuff. I also wanted to learn how to do, I think the clarinet, but mm. I never got the chance to. So, mm. I mean, I'm still open to that though. No, nah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I feel like, you know, maybe it's like riding a bike. I don't know. I've uh -huh. never played an instrument. So maybe like once you get back to yeah, it, maybe it'll learn, feel natural. Yeah. So respect um so now just with music though like how long have you been on your journey where you was like i'm taking this serious i would say like two years now because like yesterday i was not yesterday last year i was locked in all year didn't barely drop no music like i just started really dropping music like the end of this year and i mean last year and then like a couple months you know so that's when I've been really consistent, like with dropping and like mm -hmm. hitting platforms, going to different cities. Like, I feel like this has been my most consistent year though. Respect. Now I've been seeing you. I've definitely been seeing <laughs> you like, and you know, just moving around, y'all doing mm -hmm. the right thing, like traveling, investing, mm -hmm. touching the important yeah. platforms. So I truly respect that. And I know life before music, um, you know, you was doing hair. Mm -hmm. So like discuss like how that hustle relates to this music hustle or how you kind of implement that mindset into what you're doing now. Well, as far as like hair, you know, like you, when you do that, you got to grow, like you going to start off and That's be kind of like, That's true. Eh. but the more you keep doing it, the more you keep learning, the more you keep practicing, you get better. Just like with your music, same thing. Like you got to start somewhere with doing nails, like everything. Facts. You got to start somewhere. If you want it to be perfect, you got to be consistent and keep doing it. So true. that's how I say. Now, do you do your own hair? Um, yeah, but I didn't do my own hair today. Okay. I be doing my own hair most of the time. That's but, what's up. Yeah. Because I feel like as a female artist, it costs so much. So it's like to be able Lord. to do your own hair, I'm sure that probably helps. Yeah. <laughs> it help a lot. I bet. And even able to do like even basic makeup steps, just Hell stuff like yeah. that, it help more than... Cause I'd be paying one twenty five just for somebody to do my makeup, one fifty for somebody to easily, do my makeup, like easily. It's like I could do this by myself. Facts, <laughs> facts. So that's that's great skills to have. So that, mm -hmm. you know that, that definitely is beneficial to what you're doing too. Definitely. So okay, now we're talking about musical influences. Like, who's some people that you would say influence you musically, like directly and directly, and who did you come up listening to? Sure. I came up listening to a lot of the old people, like well, the older people, like. Nicki Minaj, um, Lil Wayne, mm. Chris Brown, growing up, Beyonce, like so a lot, a lot of those people, like legends, like you know, even Fifty Cent, like I was listening to his music too because yeah. he got some hits, like hell yeah. So I was listening to a lot of people, but I feel like what influenced my music the most was Nicki Minaj because really I feel like she kind of like stamped it in a different type of way to make people feel like okay well I can rap and I'm a female you know because it wasn't really a lot before then but now it's like a million of us so absolutely I think I think it's beautiful man and I love how you give Nicki her flowers because mm -hmm. no matter if people like her or not yeah. you have to she was doing yep. this shit mm -hmm. When you know it wasn't popular was it? for yep. ladies, and I and I can only imagine how tough it was to yep. be in the be rooms the only. and mm -hmm. now look at the you know floodgates opening. Exactly. You know. So what's what's your thoughts on um just the female takeover in rap? I feel like it's a beautiful thing. I feel I like too. females deserve to be heard, like be able to have Absolutely. a voice, whether they talking about some crazy stuff. You know, it's somebody that can relate to it, and it's like everybody got their own mindset. So I feel like it's it's open space for people to females to actually be able to speak up, like how men been doing before. So let's be clear. Exactly, they was going in on females, now females going in on them. But it, I mean, I still feel like it's a unity still. So yeah. I'm with you. I like that. I like that. And I want to get into some of your songs and some of your music, okay? We're going to say the back seat for last. I want to talk about your song you call Got Eater. Uh, eater? Yes. <laughs> That's now, your what, nigga. What makes someone an eater? Like, somebody that you just, like, call, like, and just they be on that freaky stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they be on some... That's the only time you probably hitting them up, and then it's like... Nine times out of ten, like, dang, that's your man. Like, your man was just doing this, and your man was just, you know, just be wild. And, like, some of these men will be messaging doing you, like, oh, I just want to suck your toes. And I'm like, what? Not me, necessarily, but I'm just saying, like, that's, they just be on some wild stuff. Like, Facts. crazy. <laughs> what was the craziest DM you probably ever received so far? 
Because um, I'm that, sure they that I could think that. of off the top of my head, probably like somebody asked me to send a picture of my toes and they'd pay me. And I'm just like, what the hell? That's kind of weird. It is. But... <laughs> people, people got foot fetishes. Like, it's a real thing. Uh -huh. though. That's crazy. Okay, now you got a song called Frenchie. Do you really have a Frenchie? No. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. I got a I'm poodle. To, okay, I'm listening to the song. I got a dog. So I'm like, damn, like, she must really love her Frenchie. Like, so. Wait. I was able to relate to it got because you. I have a dog myself. Okay. But I'm like, it's probably more people that have Frenchies than it is a poodle. Got so I'm you. like, okay, this is more relatable. And then my dog, he do all the same thing. He gets zoomies, like he hop in the bed. He just, he, he act, they act pretty much the same, they dogs, you right. know? So I was like, okay, that's a good idea. So then I had just ran with it from the. Definitely. I think yeah. it was tight. I haven't really feel like I heard any like catchy, creative uh -huh. female rap songs specifically about a dog. So I'm like, damn, yeah. okay, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Now, I want to get into this backseat record. Like I said, I think it's super fire. Um, you know, I, I seen Mellow Buck's new song, The Move. Uh -huh. It's going crazy, and it, it gives me that same tempo, that same energy. Yeah. So talk about just the creative process and what made you go with a vibe like that. So my team had actually sent me the beat, and then I was like, I'll rock with this. Mm -hmm. And then so when it, when it came through, it was already given that backseat. So I, I kind of went with that, and I was like, okay. That's what we finna talk about, like doing it in the back seat, pretty much, like you know. So that's well, I got it from the hook, pretty much put everything together for me. So got you. Is is that your process, like when you doing like making songs? Do you just make the hooks first, or do you like does it depends, or what's your process? I feel um, I think it really depends because sometimes I go based off the verse, mm -hmm. and then I make the hook, and then sometimes I make the hook and then make the verse. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then I'll follow up with, like line it up with each other. Got so. you. Okay. <laughs> Damn. That's what's up. So like, do you write, do you freestyle? Like what's your, what's your? Um, both, but mainly I write. I feel like I don't really have time to be going in the studio and waste. I like, hear that. I'm, if I'm booking a 12 hour session, I need to be knocking out like at least six to however many songs like i'm not trying to go to the studio record mm -hmm. one song or don't get a song done it's like that's a waste of my time and money so mm -mm, i'm that trying to get the work in <laughs> i like that though i mean I, you know just just working with artists working with producers you know people these days like they'll say like yeah i'm gonna just go in here and do this but you're right it's it's the they'll start me back over you know uh -huh. I mean? versus you having the music ready you being way more efficient with yep. your time. I feel that. Definitely. Feel Gotta that. make it make sense. Yeah, no, I feel <laughs> that. I feel that. Um, you know, talk about working with, you know, female rappers. I know you and Bally Baby got some music and you mm -hmm. work with other, you know, female rappers, but I happen to know her. Yeah. But, you know, talk about just, you know, the support from other female rappers. Um, I love working with other female artists. Like I've been working with female artists before it was even a trend. Right. So like I just love working with other people because it's like at the uh, end of the day, they don't dim my light and I'm not dimming they light. Like we could work together and it'll probably, that'll be probably the rawest collab ever. You know, I don't work with a lot of females though. I don't work with Aota Mermaid. I don't I work like with it. L2 Times. She a Chicago artist and a couple other people, but mainly from Chicago. But the only other two is like Aota Mermaid and Bally Baby. They both like not from Chicago. Right. Not for sure. I fuck with AR. She hard yeah, to tell. She, she uh, she came up here, we did an interview with somebody and she was just randomly here. I'm like, damn, like, you know, but she hard. <laughs> um, did, did you know of the rapper Enchanting? Uh, I knew of her. I didn't know her. Like, gotcha. I ain't never met her. But when I seen it, I was like so sad. She was a beautiful girl. Beautiful. Like, and she was talented too. She could sing, yes. rap. She was real talented. Definitely, 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 man. That is sad. Mm -hmm. But I, I do love seeing the females, you know, now just come together. Come more. together, for real. That's what's up. Um, so personal question. So like, tell me some advice and tips for dating somebody that you're doing business with. Cause I know a few people in the business that are able to do it and some people not. So how does that work? Um, well, I feel like it's just like you and your partner have to have an understanding, like my partner in the music too. So it's right. like, we both, we work together. Like, and it's like, we we talk we communicate so we be good like we don't really have no issues like 
you know, at the end of the day, he doing what he want to do, and I'm doing what I want to do. He actually my manager as well. Yep. <laughs> Respect. I, like I said, I know of a few situations like that, and to me, it's just like it's, it's definitely admirable because it's like y'all both get it, y'all. Uh huh. You know, like y'all gotta have the same mindset. Y'all have to be in the same mm -hmm. song. So I respect that y'all able to do that. Yeah, definitely. Because sure. a lot of like, I feel like a lot of people ask me like. How is it like being an upcoming artist and having a man, you know, like, mm. but a lot of people, you can't, everybody can't be your partner when you're an upcoming artist because it's not a lot of people that'll support you and they'll distract you from what you're trying to do. But if you got somebody that supports you, stick, you know, here, stick it out. Straight up, <laughs> straight up, respect. Now, maybe that's because you're the best Zodiac sign in the world. Of course. Capricorns, you know. <laughs> Big Capricorn. Yes. So, you know, as we discussed off air, we're both Capricorns. Now, mm -hmm. I'm a December Capricorn, you're a January Capricorn. So, like, address some misconceptions and, you know, some things about Capricorns, especially females. Okay. So, like, you saying, like, as far as Just anything. Like, what people think of us? Right. Yes. I mean, a lot of the stuff they be saying be kind of accurate. That's true. I can't That's even true. lie. That's like, true. Like, they be saying, like, we be nonchalant mm -hmm. and, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, but we a bad, though. Like, we always, every time I meet a Capricorn, it be good energy. It's never, like, 100%. not a Capricorn that I just be like, uh-uh, I don't like them. Like, no, it'd be a vibe. We are the vibe. <laughs> Let's be clear. It's, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's we're a particular taste, too. Uh -huh. you know, it, gotta, it gotta be a vibe there. The energy gotta exactly. be good. Exactly, yeah, because it's gonna be like, like mm-mm. Yeah. He know I he already know I'll be like, eh, I ain't feeling this. It's time to go. Like Respect. when the energy off, I just I be cool. Like I'm I'm big on energy. Absolutely. So it's like that's play a big part for me. Facts, facts, mm -hmm. facts. But well, that's what's up. Okay. Um, now I want you to talk about like just some of the biggest learning lessons that you've learned so far, just from you know, when you started out uh -huh. to just now, because I'm sure every day you probably learn so learn much. Learn something so. new, yeah. Well, I learned like in this game, you can't like trust everybody. So it's kind of, it's hard to find good people. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's like, you could be friends with somebody and really they only your friend for this reason or they using you or like just stuff like that. And I, I have a big heart. So sometimes yeah, yeah. I have to have people around me like, no, they be calling people out on their bullshit, you know? And it's like, I'll be like, for real, that's what was going on. And it'll just be like, you got too much of a big heart. So it's like, mm. I, I feel like that was one of my biggest things. And then, but I learned a lot from like everybody I'd be around, but like, you just can't trust everybody, especially not here in this game. <laughs> especially in this game. Now that's facts, that's facts. But yeah, definitely having that discernment around you mm -hmm. is definitely great. So I respect that. Um, now goals outside of music. I hear you got plans to do stuff, you know, to give back to the community and you want to do more real estate investments. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. Yes, I want to, like, uh, open up a building and, like, have people rent it out. Well, even, Absolutely. like, a space where I could have, like, suites in it mm -hmm. and people could pay, like, booth rent or, like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I want to give back to the I love dogs, so I want to help with, like, you know, cats, too. Like, I love animals. Like, I'm really an animal person. Mm. So I want to, like, help with that, help with, like, people that's homeless. Like, just all that stuff because I'm one of them people, like, I like to give to people that I know need it more than, like, I would need it. So it's like, why not? And I feel like a lot of people now don't really care about animals like that. They kind of just throw them out on the streets and stuff like that. And I feel like they got feelings, too. Like, you you can't just treat them like that, but that's just me. Everybody else be like, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, it's just, it's a normal day in Virginia. Uh, I'm outside walking my dog, and there goes a bear. A bear? <laughs> yes, a bear. First time I've ever seen a bear in my life, like, in real life, no. not at the zoo. Like, this is outside in a neighbor yard, oh, wow. like, running from another dog. And I'm just like, what the wait, heck Wait, wait, the bear on? was running? From a dog, yes. I'm like, I was so <laughs> scared. I'm like, this is the biggest thing. What I've yes. never seen a bear. In and then we got we got neighborhood cats. We mm -hmm. got neighborhood dogs. I feed the cats though that like come around and stuff like that. Damn. Because it's like at the end of the day, they clearly they ain't got nowhere to go. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't take all of them, and I ain't. 
Yeah. But I just feed them, like, because a lot of them, like, I know them. So they'll come up and be meowing like they hungry, and I'll just feed them and stuff like that. So that's, like, the country lifestyle. <laughs> nah, for sure. I, I I haven't been to Virginia yet, so I, I can't even picture what it would look like. But for y'all to see a bear is crazy, and I'm glad nothing happened. But, yeah, um, I don't say three of them. Just out? That's crazy. One H, have was, you seen a bear out there? Yeah, that's nuts. One was about to dump stuff. Taking out the trash. <laughs> oh, that's different. It had me mad, but I'm like, yeah, this some country ass. Yeah, that's, that's like, different. Like, the people out there, they be like, you act like you ain't never. I said, I haven't. So Man, that's I, normal to them. Yeah, like, they, they the snakes, the mm -hmm. bugs, mm -hmm. all that. Like, I'm like I I've never seen it. no bugs like this before. They be like, I I'm like no. It. I'm so scared of reptiles and bugs. But um, just back to the dog thing. That's how I got my dog. Like he was neglected uh, pretty much. You know. Oh, so okay. I definitely what kind of dog you dog. got? He's a Boston oh. Terrier. But um, I respect that though, and I hope that you can, you know, bring that into fruition soon. Just because, like you said, it is a lot of animals in need. So yeah, for real. It is. It is. Um, so what you got coming up next musically? Musically, well, I know I'm be dropping on dummy featuring a the mermaid mm. that's gonna be coming up i got two video shoots coming up i'm shooting a birthday song and okay. i'm shooting cook up it's called cook up so those will be coming up soon too oh okay. i'm like i need some more videos out yeah like, absolutely you know keep the visuals coming like you know Mm -hmm. Fans want to see that. They want to exactly. hear you. They want to see you too. Mm -hmm. Um, dope, dope, dope. So I like how just with the music though, like you doing stuff with themes, like a birthday yeah. song. I feel like you never go wrong. So. Oh yeah, that song hard too. Like I ain't That's gonna lie, song. you like backseat, you gonna like that song. Like okay. that song real hard. I'm playing for you. Yes, I end. look forward to hearing it. Um, so you know, lastly, I gotta ask you our keyword progress. I know I asked you this during the IG live. Uh -huh. but what does our keyword progress mean to you now? You said my keyword. So our keyword here is progress, the progress support. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, everybody's definition of that keyword progress is different. Different. So what does uh -huh. it mean to you? Progress mean to me is basically like growth. That's what that's what I get from it. Like it's like you growing like progress every time you getting better at something. Like that's what what I think of it. I don't know what everybody else think, but I think of it as growth. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. So it's like, you know, every time that we do another interview, it's going to uh -huh. be more growth, more progress. Yep. Next time we're going to talk about the video with you on AR. Yep. Can't wait to see it here. All that yes. good stuff. So I much can't wait to drop success. it. Success. Yes. yes. Um, let them know your IG. Where can they follow you? Y'all can follow me on Instagram at L-U-L-J-A-I-D-A underscore. And on everything else, all other platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, it's all Lil Jada. If it don't have an underscore at the end. And also, go to my website, LilJadaWorld.com. Yeah, let's go. Okay, well, thank you for <laughs> skipping class with me today. Perfect. Thank you for having me. The Progress Report.